In this video, we are going to talk about using a standard hobby servo to control the barrel elevation movement. Of course, you do not have to use a servo. The TCB gives you many motor options to control the barrel elevation, but two of these options can be used with the servo RC output and servo pan effect. If you do use a servo for the barrel elevation, it will be plugged into RC output 4 on the TCB board. And as always, if you forget, each RC output's function is clearly marked on the bottom of the board. Now let's examine the difference between RC output and the servo pan effect. RC output can be used to control an electronic speed control or ESC or a standard hobby servo in the manner in which you are probably used to. The servo pan effect can only be used with the servo and it will modify the way in which the servo moves. Let's look at an example now. With RC output, servo movement tracks the stick movement. When the stick is moved away from center, the servo moves away from center, and when the stick is released, the servo returns to center. With pan effect, stick movements give the servo a speed and direction, but not an absolute position. When the stick is moved away from center, the servo begins to move in that direction at a speed relative to the stick's deflection. Large stick movements will cause the servo to move very quickly, and small stick movements will cause it to move very slowly. Nothing about the physical servo has been changed. All of these effects are created entirely in software. Notice that when the stick is released, the servo does not return to center. It simply stops in whatever position it was last at. As you can see, this makes the pan effect ideal for a barrel elevation servo. Now let's examine how to set the servo's endpoints. Because this servo is not directly associated with any specific channel on your transmitter, you can't set the endpoints by using the transmitter settings. Instead, we can use a special menu on the TCB itself. Dip switches 3 and 4 are used to select special menus. To select the barrel elevation servo setup menu, both switches 3 and 4 need to be in the on position. Then to enter the menu, we press and hold the input button for 2 seconds, at which point the red LED will turn on. Let's see this now from a wider angle. Hold the input button for 2 seconds. The servo will move to one extreme when you have entered the menu. While in this menu, we can use the up and down movement of the turret stick to adjust the servo's endpoint. All our adjustments will only be made to one side of the servo's travel. To switch to the other side, we'll use the left and right movement of the drive stick to move to the other half of the servo's travel. We can move back and forth to each side and adjust the endpoints until we're satisfied with the servo's movement. Once we have the servo set up exactly how we want, Press the input button briefly to exit the menu. Now we can verify that the servo does indeed move within the new endpoints that we have set. Let's see this one more time. Once again, to enter the servo setup menu, press and hold the input button for 2 seconds. Now we will set the servo's endpoints back to 45 and 45. Press the input button briefly to exit the menu, and once again we can verify our new endpoints. Now, what if we want to reverse the servo? We use the same setup menu that we've already used to adjust the endpoints to change the servo's direction. Press and hold the input button for two seconds to enter the setup menu. Next, we will use the up and down movement of the drive stick to change the servo's direction. Now press the button briefly to exit the menu. and you can see that the servo's movement has been reversed. Now you should know how to adjust your barrel elevation servo's endpoints and reversing.